Welcome back. I'm Emily Sterling, and I'm here with Karen Lobo-Fried, um, amazing Hawaii artist, super special. We're here at her um, wonderful house in Volcano. Um, we're going to share today about her work and what she's been up to. I think first we want to um, introduce your brand new book that's just coming out, um, Manu, the Boy Who Loved Birds. This is a fantastic book about our um, Oh, oh bird, that's just an uh, incredible story. It also captures a lot of really great messaging about conservation and our um, wonderful native species that we have here in Hawaii. Uh, well, yeah. what's fun about this, I mean, it's, there's been a path, but mostly my drive has been to use art and stories to really hopefully encourage people to want to fall in love with wildlife and to want to learn how they can help to conserve it. Um, but it's really fun to use my art and, which goes back to the womb, actually. Oh. <laughs> I was excited to tell you yes. this. Yes, when I, I, my mom is a, is a block print artist, and um, when I was born, I mean, this is what she was doing. She would actually teach classes in our basement, <laughs> so I would hang, I would hang out under the table while she was teaching. So I got to learn absorbing it all. Yeah. yeah. So I got to really see it, and it was all around our home. All of her pictures were around. So that was. Um, it's kind of cool to come. I, I got into painting when I was younger, but then I, I decided to start to do block printing. So that what's nice about block printing is that you can everybody can it's you can make a lot of them. It's not just one of a kind. Realize I love birds. I started to learn who was who and really felt a connection with different places because of different animals that were there. But I didn't really understand about places in relation to um, plants and environment and how those things are connected and how bringing in other things can change it, especially in a place like Hawaii where it's so sensitive and isolated yeah. and everything. So I've been learning more and more and that's the thing that's so fun for me personally about doing books and the art, but the research that I get to do and the, who, the people who trust me, the biologists and the people that are doing different kinds of conservation work that trust me and invite me and show me behind the scenes is uh, a thrill. So I love being in the middle of a project, which I'm going right from this into yeah. something else. Yeah, so where did you get your inspiration for the oh bird wow. and telling this story? I mean, that it is a really was. incredible bird that we unfortunately no longer have around. That's right, so there were four species of oh <laughs> birds. The seed for this story came from Marjorie Ziegler and Conservation <laughs> Council for Hawaii. Yeah, so Marge was, was my friend and I did a lot of work with Conservation Council. And um, she always said that we always learn about dinosaurs and them being extinct. She said, but it's right, it's here, right? It's happening. Hawaii, it's, it's happening now. now. So we need to teach our, the local keiki and just, mm -hmm. and everybody to understand that it's not just these, that dinosaurs, these things that we imagine, it's things that are, extinction is happening right now. And that's another thing that's cool about you guys, because you bring people into the field. And they get, experiencing something firsthand is so powerful. And making that connection. And making yeah. that connection, and that's, like, with my books, I'm trying to really wake up everybody's senses when they read the stories, so that they hopefully can get a little bit of a sense of what it might be like. Mm -hmm. And that was what was so challenging about Mother, mm -hmm. this story, because it's a, it's an extinct bird. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you bring a, bring a bird back to life? I mean, my, yeah. my visuals, what I could look at, I couldn't go out in the field and see them. Mm -hmm. So I went to Bishop Museum and then I heard mm -hmm. written zoology and looking at the skins and all these yeah. things. And yeah. talking to people like Thane Pratt, who mm -hmm. was in the field. Yeah. Paul Banco. I mean, they, yeah. they researched. They got to actually experience in the fields of hearing them and learning about their personality. Thane actually let me his field notes from oh, cool. the Kaiki stuff. And um, yeah, so learning about their behavior. Mm -hmm. And Thane also reviewed my sketches. So I was able to make sure that I could really capture. Because he's had, he said, they're aggressive. You know, yeah. they're a little bigger. They would fight the smaller birds away from the Lehua blossoms. Oh. So they would do stuff like, you know, crouch down and splay their feathers. <laughs> and said, he said, imagine that flesh of yellow and flesh of white in the tail feathers of the um, Oahu Oho. Yeah. And he, he brought them, he helped bring them to life for me in such an incredible way. I'm so grateful to him for that. So that's what I try to do. I try to really get the personality of the species. Even if it's a plant. I mean, plants have personalities. Yeah. You know, yeah. the way they grow, kind of. 
Yeah, yeah. They just spoke also. <laughs> so it's about a Hawaiian boy. He's named after the extinct O O bird. So yeah. his hit through his journey of mm -hmm. wanting to understand the meaning of his name, yeah. we learn about his Hawaiian heritage. heritage. So he actually goes yeah. to Bishop Museum, so do we. Yeah. <laughs> and we get to see all the different mm -hmm. things we learn about feather work, feather mm -hmm. hunters. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of really cool stuff. There's a lot of Hawaiian language. And the book yeah. was actually, UH Press published it in a Hawaiian language edition. So oh, that's so wonderful. No, that's oh, wonderful. Know, it me, yeah. right? That's Conservation Council. They yeah. really wanted to do it. UH Press is like, yeah, yeah. let's do it. So oh, very wonderful. Yeah. So, so we're hoping great. that a lot of people really enjoy yeah. it and get to kind of think about you know, um, how important it is to conserve yeah. these species. Yeah. Like, I was really lucky to spend time on Midway Atoll. Atoll, yeah, yeah, you've done a lot of work with the albatross and researching yeah. them and yeah. actually helping participate in conservation with them as well, right. too. Right. Yeah. I went a second time mm -hmm. this past mm -hmm. winter and um, hopefully I'm going to be going again this this winter. Mm -hmm. So this the project, the first project I did on Midway was a piece of art that was supposed to sort of capture the spirit mm -hmm. of Midway. So when I was there, I, I kept two journals, one writing, and I would write every morning. I, would, I was exhausted at night because I would be out in the field all, all day, day. Long, yeah. and then come back and just crash. And then in the morning, I would get up super early and just write for about an hour. And all those impressions I've drawn, drawn on, both for the art and for the, um, the story that came later. So I did the art first for Midway, which was... And I had to tell the story, so I knew that the lace ant albatross was going to be the main character mm -hmm. because they're so present at that time of year when I was yeah. there. Um, around in the water, I got to show the different um, yeah. elements. Yeah. And when I was there, I was very, I was careful to, I knew the things that I wanted to uh, experience and learn about. So I did a lot of writing. And then a lot of sketching of the different plants mm -hmm. and of course, yeah. the different um, mm -hmm. or um, remnants. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and the symbols of the Battle of Midway. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then just the cool, like just quick sketches in mm -hmm. the field. Yeah. Of her, oh, what they were kind of yeah. upstairs. That sounds great. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. more detailed drawing so I want to make sure I get all of my details that I painstakingly included in the initial drawing and all the research and everything so I oops, try to include all the details from my sketch and then I put it on my block. The way I transfer it onto my block is turn it upside down. That was a soft pencil, a 6B pencil. Put it on the block and transfer it onto the block. You can kind of peek at it and make sure it's working. Okay. And then I'll usually go over it with a China marker or ballpoint pen. And then I carve away everything that isn't black. And cut the rest of this away and then I can pull a quick print from this one little area so we can see how that looks. And you can always do um, test prints throughout and make sure you like the way it's coming along.
So here he is in the original sketch. And that became so see how it's like it's so much like what it ends up becoming. Mm -hmm. That always blows me away. And this drawing, I just did it, you know, I was hanging out mm -hmm. and I pictured him just really having a quiet, intimate moment with this little cakey poetry. And that is exactly how it ended up being in the final. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to pull a print of the, from the book, the Mummy story. Outplanting. So, as you can see, it's slipping and sliding on here. But I want to make sure the ink covers all of the surface of my roller. Now it's starting to look good. You don't want it to be too thick so that it fills in the holes. You want it to just lay on the surface. You want to get a little bit of ink covering all the surfaces. Mm -hmm. So I'm using a water-based ink you now. For the, mm -hmm. my, the stuff that's more permanent, I'll use a, um, an oil-based ink. And I've used this ink that I really love. That's um, it's a vegetable oil-based ink. sketch and the block and notice how the block is the actual reverse of the image and then you have your black and white and then there's the color. <laughs> I use um, color pencils to do all my coloring and these are watercolor pencils so I can do some blending so that's how I do all of the book art. It's black and white and now you can see what it looks like after I add the coloring to it. So it's all watercolor pencils. A little sketch in the field or you, you dream about something, you wake up with an idea in your mind. Just do a quick, a quick sketch and don't worry about if it's junk. Or not. Yeah, I was gonna ask. Great, yeah. great tips Whoa. for other artists yeah. that are out there. Yeah, just go ahead, just blah, get it all yeah. out on the page. Whether yeah. it's writing, whether it's um, sketching, sketching. Mm -hmm. your art mm -hmm. things like that's your that story. It has to come out. Mm -hmm. So don't start editing immediately. Just yeah. get it all no. out. So that's yeah. definitely something that I always try to remember. Well, thank you for yeah for sharing and opening up your um, studio here and letting us see your your workspace. That was really great to see and um, see how it's all done and how it's all made and how things come together. I mean, wow, all of that comes into this beautiful, amazing book that you know, everyone can see. And, yeah, I just wanted to say that what you guys are doing with Abayine is incredible, and we we really do share the same. Um, mm -hmm idea of reaching people and getting people involved and, yeah. and uh, I'm, I always was very excited by what you're doing and I appreciate it. Oh, mahalo for that. Um, we're excited to see what more you have to come um, yeah. and just yeah there's yeah there's more. <laughs> yeah. This just came and the next there'll be a companion volume, a seabird volume. Cool. So that'll be on the blog. Yeah. Excited to see that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you again. Yeah. This is really thank great. You. Yeah, nice really to meet special. You yeah, thank you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank too. you everybody. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>